Most of the time, I'm pretty open to trying games of a genre I'm not particularly fond of. When I was younger, I rarely ever played fighting games, but over the years, I found more and more titles that opened the door to what is now one of my favorite type of game to play. But there was one genre I just couldn't get into point and click adventure games. And believe me, I tried. I have a friend who was quite into them and I'd often find myself giving them a go when I went over to visit. Broken Sword was one I remember putting the most time into. I'd play for a while, but eventually become uninterested or just got lost, unable to find out how to continue. But among the various titles I tried, there is one that I will always remember fondly. Toonstruck. Released in 1996 on PC and re-released on GOG in 2015. So if at any point this sounds like a game you'd play, keep in mind that you can still get it today. So let's get struck in. You take control of Drew Blank, a cartoon animator and original creator of the Fluffy Fluffy Bun Bun Show. Drew is fed up of drawing bunnies, but after 10 years of success, the company's boss requests him to draw even more rabbits for a spin-off show. Exactly what the show needs, uh, more. Bunnies. Clearly fed up and uninspired, Drew nods off, finding himself waking up to the nearby TV being turned on. With that old lightning strikes and dark atmosphere trope, he then finds himself mysteriously teleported into the cartoon world, populated by many different cartoons, some of which are his creation. Now I should probably point out the fact that Drew is played by Christopher Lloyd, and oh boy, the amount of talent in this game does not stop there. There are a ton of well-known names behind its characters, which will get into as we go. He quickly finds himself meeting up with Flux Wildly, a character Drew thought up and has wanted to let star in his own show for years. Really? Flux? Now why could he have named him that? Confused and looking for answers, they both decide to see if the king has any advice. Okay, I have to point this out. The fact that this is a human in a cartoon world trying to interact, things can get a little awkward. But that's only going by today's standards. I mean, for the time, this was really good. There's something oddly nostalgic about it. Of course, from the game itself, but just the effect in general. Still better than most of the effects I can do. Come on, man. I don't know. Your effects are pretty good. Well, of course you would think that. You're literally just me added in post using a mask tool. Hey, just because I'm added in post doesn't mean I don't have feelings. The king informs the duo of the evil Nefarious, transforming things in Qtopia into vile and corrupt things using a machine called the Malevolator. And in order to help you, he requires your help to fix the problem. He instructs you to go meet the royal engineer, who turns out to be not so much help. Where, oh where are my glasses? Look in your pocket! Oh! Okay! My glasses! I wonder who put them there? Eventually, he informs you that to fix what Nefarious has done, you need to make the Cutie Fire, a flying ship using the opposite items that the Malevolator uses. Well, you have your main goal? Now off you go, to adventure! Much like the point and clicks of old, you're now left on your own to just interact and talk. So let's explore town. And here there are plenty of characters to give us a good idea of what to do and where to go. My personal favorite place is the pub, of course. Not only because I like me a good drink, but it also has one of my favorite characters. Hello and welcome! So glad you could make it to me lovely establishment. The dialogue options normally range from specific things to, um... Breaking the ice? Yeah, puns are something you will have to get used to. I mean, I ran into the king's footman earlier. Hello again. Oh joy, one can barely contain one's excitement. Not just puns though, you're gonna have to get used to seeing some pretty sneaky adult humor in there too. Quite a few of them using clever wordplay. That's an interesting organ you have there. Oh, my coat's riding up again, isn't it? Though that isn't where the slightly adult themes end, but I'll get to that in due time. Just to warn you, you're not gonna look at farm animals in the same way. And that already just sounds terrible, actually. Forget I said that. Something you'll notice is that all the characters are voice acted, often from many talented people. Flux is Dan Castellaneta, and Nefarious is Tim Curry. A perfect fit, I might add. And every line of text is voiced out with great results, making the interactions between characters always something to look forward to. It just makes me question how they got all these amazing voices in one place. Gee, that's a good question. How did they do that? Silence! Fool! 
Oh, we'll, 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 we'll find him, sire, and, and bring him to you. It's as good as done. Which brings me to the writing. It reminds me of a classic 80s or 90s cartoon where it looks and is structured like a kid's show, but has some writing that the parents will specifically get a chuckle out of. Though that's not to say this game is targeted to kids. You learn very quickly that it's definitely not. In fact, the game can have one or two moments where it gets pretty grim, and the atmosphere can get rather creepy at times, which I'm sure you'll see as we continue. After we've spoken to everyone in town and picked up a few items, as you continue to explore you'll notice that some paths are cut off, keeping you in a particular area until you have the items you need. So that means it's time to play a point and click the only way we know how. Time to try clicking every item on everything! Hmm, we need something to get this thing to work? Try this! Or this! Or- A plunger. A plunger. A plunger. In this section of the game it helps if you've messed with the controls a bit. If you have, you'll know that there are moments where you can control what Flux does. Hopefully, this will give you the idea of trying extra things while events are happening. If you have a keen eye, you'll notice the guards outside the castle drop the key they're trying to keep safe. This might be your first roadblock, as you may not know you can pick up this item during the dance. But in doing so, continuing from there is fairly straightforward. After all of that, there's only a few more puzzles you'll need to solve to explore the game's next island, Zany Do. This place is basically ripped right out of Looney Tunes cartoon and cranked up to 11. I'm pretty sure it's my favorite area design-wise. It's also the home of Flux, which explains a lot of things. This is a sophisticated piece of sporting equipment. Next, you'll be wanting to be Smirch, the Scroll of Wisdom! This is where solutions to puzzles start to become a little more confusing. Mainly because, well, have you seen the place? Normal isn't exactly standard around here, so you bet your ass they're gonna use that to throw you off the tracks a little. Thankfully, the puzzles never get too tough, which is to the game's credit, meaning you always feel like you're progressing nicely. That's not to say the game doesn't pull the use this item in a very particular pixel, but that only happens like one once or twice. It's after we return from Zany Do that places we've visited start getting hit by Nefarious's Malevolator, which prompts us to go visit them again to see what's up. Seems the barn was hit this time. I wonder what. Uh, uh, ah! Whip my cream! I played this when I was much younger, to a point where I didn't really get the context of this scene, and man, seeing it now, what? The fuck? I mean, nowadays I find this pretty amusing, but man, was it a shock for unaware people when I streamed this. Well, after suppressing that memory, really there is only one place to aim for and that's Nefarious's part of the island. But in order to get there, we have to present the big bad wolf with some wine, which uh, doesn't go very well. Hey, what's cooking, good looking? Spoiler, it's me, please help. Of course, I am cutting out a bunch of extra steps to get to these points, but if I covered everything, well, well, that would take forever. Plus, if you have decided to watch this video and play the game after anyway, you still have things to figure out. After escaping the clutches of the big bad wolf, our heroes can now visit the evil part of the island, full of deformed and shadowy buildings populated by monsters, robots, and other unsightly creatures. Now that we're here, we officially have the whole island open to explore, meaning all remaining items are ready to be traded and used somehow. This section is mostly the part of the game that uses up the remainder of your unused items. Though this might be a good time to remember the overall objective, to find items to make the cutifier. So not everything in your sack might be something you use around the island. This area only has two places of interest, the bowling alley and a workshop, though you are only here for maybe a total of two interactions. It does have another building that is only used if you get caught by Nefarious's henchmen. They can randomly show up as you explore and you have to quickly find a place to hide. Failure to do so will make them throw you into a jail cell and store your items away. And the only way to get them back is by solving a sliding puzzle. Yay. So after you have all the items needed for the machine, it's your job to put them in the correct position. It's pretty easy to figure out. Hmm, salt, pepper, pins, needles, cloak and dagger. Yeah, it's pretty simple to see where this is going. Once fixed, you take the cutie fire out and reverse all of Nefarious's damage. You return to the king and he tells you a job well done. But then, a plot twist. The king remind the duo that the deal was in order for him to help them out. They had to cutify the world. 
Of course, Drew and Flux refuse completely and proceed to walk out of the building, planning to find some other way to return home. During the commotion, the king falls down to reveal it isn't actually the king, but Fluffy Fluffy Bun Bun. A bunny with a master plan! That is never good. You are then caught by Nefarious's henchmen and thrown in a prison cell. Just as you wake up, you come face to face with our main villain. Nefarious informs Drew that he's been injected with a serum which slowly turns him into a cartoon, and that if he can't escape in time, he'll be stuck in Qtopia forever. This is the final section of the game, and probably where the most complex puzzles are, which makes sense. We're actually in Nefarious's castle, so it's twisted, it's creepy, it has a weird clown, and hang on a minute, I want to talk about this guy because he only ever appears here, right at the end of the game, he's only really important for like one puzzle, why is he on the box art so much? If he was like some recurring character then maybe, but I just don't get it. You'd think like maybe Drew and Flux would be a good pick, but anyway. Overall this area isn't too bad, it can get a little confusing with the temperature swapping mechanic, but even then that's only used like twice. Quite a lot of people remember this sunglasses room though, mainly because this is the area that required like all the things you didn't know what to do with. As you explore you hear that Nefarious has made a device that can infiltrate your world, perfect for getting Drew back. You also find out that he's trying to get rid of Flux for good. So now you make your way up to the top of the tower to find that device and escape in the Malevolator. Now in order to do this, you do need to use said sunglasses, which happen to be mirrored, to hypnotize Nefarious's feline psychic assistant. You power up the console, get into the Malevolator, and the final cutscene plays where you attempt to save Flux. There's a lovely back and forth between Flux and Drew as he falls to his death, preparing his attempt to return home. They both say their final words, and Drew uses the device to then find out it was all a dream. But because of this adventure, Drew has new motivation and confidence in his friend Flux. He tries his hardest to pitch the idea of Flux wildly. Unfortunately, even after all this, it doesn't happen. Truly defeated, he returns to his old job. Until suddenly, he gets a call from the communicator that Flux gave him at the end. And it turns out, Flux needs his help. Fluffy and Nefarious are still alive, causing havoc. But Drew doesn't know how he'll get there. And with the power of the serum running through his veins still, he can transport himself to the cartoon world to be able to help Flux and go on more adventures. And then the credits roll. Oh my god. This was a delight to play through again. Honestly, I think the story and writing is really what draws you to continue. Though I do feel like it drags on just a small amount near the end. There were a few sections where puzzles would be a little bit obscure, but that never took away from the overall charm of the experience. Being able to just explore a really bizarre and interesting world. I thoroughly enjoyed it, which is a lot, I think, for me, considering I did say at the beginning that I'm not a big fan of the genre. I don't actually remember completing the game when I was younger, instead I watched my friend complete it. So finally, after all these years, being able to beat it myself felt quite rewarding. And I actually feel like I enjoyed it more now than I did back then, because I get a lot more of the jokes. I'm really into that nostalgic old aesthetic, and everything just fits perfectly to remind me of an old cartoon. Especially in the music department, which unfortunately you might not be hearing much of it in this video. When I actually went looking for the soundtrack, track, a lot of Ren and Stimpy stuff came up, so I'm just using not that, just for the safety of this video. But here's the real kicker. What really sucks was there was gonna be a second one, but it was cancelled, which is unfortunate because the end certainly felt like it was gonna lead up into another big adventure, but unfortunately that isn't gonna happen. At least as far as I'm aware, have any of you played Toonstruck? And if so, what did you think? Any particular characters you enjoyed over the others? And would you have any recommendations of other point and click games with a similar style as this one. But those have been my memories of Toonstruck. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Of course, I'd love to give a huge shout out to my Patreon supporters. Thank you for supporting me through this journey. And for the $3 tier, we're now doing a monthly audio podcast, me and my friend Chaos D1 talking about all kinds of things. And once again, thank you for watching this episode of Pixelated Memories. Don't forget to throw the video a like if you enjoyed, and subscribe to be notified of more videos, especially if you hit that bell. And as always, I have two more videos that you can check out if you haven't already. Thank you, and goodbye.